Yes, the real media. KJAG Radio and KMA Entertainment, your source for entertainment news and interviews in Central and South Central Kansas. The best of the best are here, and we go above and beyond to bring you the most bang for your buck. Find us on the social sites like Facebook and Twitter. Log on to kjagradio.com and jiggyjaguar.com for more. Thank you. Good night. Back here on kjagradio.com. I'm Jiggy Jag, Jigman Freud, out here in the middle of Hutchinson, Kansas. We're going to go down to McPherson here in just a few moments to the Upper House, the legendary Upper House, to see John Holacek and crew. Also to hang out with Gary Morris. That's right, legendary country music star Gary Morris in the building for a one-night-only performance. We're going to go talk to Gary Morris right now here on kjagradio.com. Get on the run. We're going. Well, uh, thanks for doing this, by the way. It's an yeah. honor to uh, have someone of your stature want to chat with someone a chucklehead like me. So <laughs> this, is, this is nice. Um, the first question has to be, talk to me about the wind beneath my wings. Oh, what would you like to know? Uh, the, the writing process. <laughs> what? Well, actually, I didn't reason. write Wind Beneath My Wings. Two of my buddies, Larry Haley and Jeff Silbar, wrote it. And they, um, it was a... I was at Warner Brothers Music, they were at Warner Brothers Music, and they were in the next room, and if I had walked in there, my name would have been on it too. So I heard it right <laughs> off the bat, and I thought, uh, this is a song I need to do. Yeah. And uh, I was lucky enough to have great success with it. It won Song of the Year for me, which goes to the writer and to the artist. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Now, uh, nine studio albums and five number ones. Mm-hmm. Give me your reaction to all that. That's a, that's a heck of a... Uh, thing to put on your resume. Well, you know, um, I went to Nashville to make records and um, I didn't go there to try. I went there to make records and got lucky enough to sign with Warner Brothers and and uh, had uh, after my first my first two singles went to 40 and after that I think everything I had went top 10 or number one and, yeah. um, until I went to do Les Mis and then at, at that point in time uh, I got no more music played on country radio. I had I did three or four albums after doing Les Mis on Broadway and uh, never got a single charted. So yeah. it was kind of like uh, I, I chose a different path at that point in time. Uh, I like all those records and I've done some music since uh, yeah. doing Les Mis and I'll be doing a bunch of that tonight. That's cool. Now uh, I was doing some uh, background research on you and apparently you've done commercial jingles for Frontier Airlines. I mean, you really heard a lot. So I've done, <laughs> before I went to Nashville, I won some awards for writing jingles and singing them. I did, yeah. I've done them for big real estate companies and banks and autos and Frontier Airlines. Um, I can't even remember who, but I, I, I've probably done 50 commercials. What's it like to write a commercial jingle rather than write a, a a, a it, hit it's song. I, I can write <laughs> jingles all day long. You got a subject and you you know what you need to focus on. I tell you a, a kind of a fun story. I, I had this guy come in, I was playing a solo gig, and he said, We want you to do a jingle for our bank. And I went, yeah. Okay. And uh, it was in Colorado Springs. And uh, the bank, we would hire topless tellers if we thought it would <laughs> get, we'd get more people in. I yeah. went, Okay. Yeah, really? So, um, uh, the name of the bank was Citadel Bank. Okay. He said, "But we want, we want this to be a ballad." Okay. So I wrote this song, and I, I just remember it. Uh, uh, Citadel means millions, and so the hook I went with was the strength of millions at Citadel. Come bank with us, and you know damn well it matters who you are. I wrote this saying, "It matters who you are," and they came and said, "We love it, we love it," and then they took it to. Uh, uh, the chairman of the board, who was a, an older lady, and she said, well, would he say darn? And I went, no. You, you're telling me you'll put topless tellers in, but if I say, you know damn well, you won't do it, so find somebody else. But did a lot of commercials, wrote a lot of them. I, I kind of liked doing it. Now, uh, you signed on with Jimmy Carter's presidential campaign and sang at fundraisers during Carter's campaign. What was that like going on? I was just opening it. Road and doing all sorts I of things. I did 85 performances with uh, President Carter uh, before anybody knew who he was except the people in Georgia. Uh, yeah. 
started out in Asheville, North Carolina, and played all the way up to the inaugural ball, and then played CMA night at the White House after that. Wow. Now, uh, you, you later opened a mu music publishing office in Nashville, mm -hmm. and it's uh, one of your employees was Faith Hill. Faith Hill was my receptionist. Now, she was, I think, <laughs> 17 or 18 years old. And, That's crazy. Uh, uh, she came up and... Uh, uh, she, I, first thing I said is, now, are you wanting to get in the music business? She said, oh, no, I just want a job. And about three or four years later, I came in one day, and she was crying. I said, what's, what's going on, Faith? She said, well, I, I really want to be a singer. I said, okay, well, then you're fired. And she said, what? I said, you got a husband? Have him, have him support you. Go sing. And she got a job at Reba's, working like two days or three days a week part-time right after that, working her office. Next thing you know, she got a development deal. And uh, I was lucky enough to bring her on. I was hosting a show called Nashville Now. I brought her on TV the first time she ever went on TV, and she yeah. sang two or three songs there. That's amazing. Now, uh, you, had, you, you, did, you mentioned earlier the Les Mis stuff. Mm -hmm. um, how is it different doing Broadway productions than doing live stage performances with country music in it? Mm, well, when you country music is a big broad title, you go some places, and um, I've been places where they go, "Hey, this sound system was good enough for George Jones; it ought to be good enough for you." And that was at a time when I had uh, a, a band that was a kind of a smoking band yeah. playing twin guitars, and I'm going, "Well, we've got our own PA in the truck." The production in New York is always at the top of its game when you're there. Yeah. I didn't know that, but I mean, everybody from the electrician to the plumber to the uh, makeup people, the wardrobe, everything is top of the game. And a lot of times when you go out and you play clubs across the country, you know, I remember one time we had in our rider must have a clear stage, meaning maybe it wasn't worded properly that when we arrive the stage needs to be clear of all things and we got there and the club owner says you know I looked all over the state for a clear stage but we couldn't find one <laughs> so I had a little of that it's a little different that's awesome <laughs> now uh, you did a PBS special concert production in Moscow Russia what was that like going to Russia and uh, it, was, it was actually um, uh, there's uh, I want to say very little thread of spirituality in the, the Russian people. Uh, they lost their churches in, in I think of the 1940s and yeah. didn't get them back until 2000. So I remember I had an interpreter that said, oh, we have this uh, this cr new thing, it's, it's Christmas. Uh, we have a thing, in, in, uh, it was a, tr a Christmas tree in the mall. It was the first year in yeah. 1990, I believe it was, or 80, 89 or 90. It was fun to do it because people are people, and, and and you know emotions are still emotions. But um, it was uh, it was real different. Now, uh, you you did a uh, you did a few duets with with Crystal Gale. One being "Another World," which was used as a, a theme song for the NBC soap opera. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that like? You know, just having your having one of your songs being a, a television theme. Oh, it was fun. Everybody around the world knows it. And, you are my way to another world, Crystal and I, and we both got to go on and do one of the episodes, or two or three, I think we did two or three days there. It was fun, it's, it's kind of cool to hear it on, when it, when it played on TV, yeah. it was fun. Now, uh, now supposedly, uh, you, you had rare success outside country music, but your, uh, because of your hit songs were supposedly pop country, in a pop country vein, during the height of your career. Mm -hmm. What do you think about now, it seems like you turn on CMT or any of the country radio stations, and they all sound poppy. Well, yeah, I, I probably was part of what was pushing the envelope back in the early 80s. Uh, yeah. What I don't like about now is guys like Merle or George uh, can't get anything played because they're too country. Yeah. Uh, there shouldn't be a place in country radio where somebody who's a real pure old style country singer can't be heard. Um, uh, you know, Rascal Flats would have been in the um, late seventies or maybe the early eighties. It would have been what Log is a Messina, kind of kind of a pop yeah. middle road thing. And now they're one of the standards of what country music is. Um, you know, you've got. You've got Lady Annabellum, which is a, 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 a kind of a yeah. pop country act, and then Linda Davis, the mother of Lady uh, uh, Annabellum, who is, is just as country as dirt. And uh, and she probably would have trouble getting played on country radio for being too country <laughs> the way she sings. Now, uh, 
Talk to me about social networking. You do you do Twitter, you do Facebook, you do all these things. Oh, I'm a Twitter. If you'd have told me 15 years ago, you're going to be tweeting, I'd go, I'd probably knock you out. But, uh, <laughs> the, uh, it's an important part of the career now. Yeah. It's like I have Facebook friends one standing behind you, and, and I have people that, um, you know, that I can talk to that uh, actually really can make a difference in, in your musical life. Yeah. You can reach out, and uh, I'm not real good on the computer, and sometimes I'll I'll call my manager and say, okay, type this, <laughs> and I'll give her stuff, <laughs> because I'll be driving. Yeah. And, uh, but but uh, the social network has, has uh, changed the whole face of what the music industry is. Now, uh, you've, been in, you've, you've been around McPherson today. Well, what do you think of the uh, Opera House? Oh, the Opera House is beauty. It's a beauty. Yeah. It's a real beauty. Uh, I... I, you know, I love to play these things. We were seeking them out. What kind of little small uh, traditional opera houses? Because they're easy for me to go sing as a solo act. Yeah, it takes very little PA and uh, you fill it up. Uh, they did a beautiful job here. Well, that's cool. Well, before I let you go, my friend, uh, in early 2008, you released two gospel CDs. Yep. What? Uh, what was the motivation behind? Uh, I'll get the motivation was being a Christian and doing the music for okay. once. <laughs> uh, I, I grew up in the Southern Baptist Church and I yeah. kind of made a promise to my, my parents that somewhere along the line I'm going to do some, I, I'm not really, I never was a gospel singer. I, what I really sing best in that genre is hymns because I grew up singing hymns in church. Yeah. And we didn't have this uh, new age country music, new age Christian music, you know, yeah. uh, contemporary Christian. It was like... We sang, I sang the old rugged cross. I sang these songs that uh, that uh, I still sing. Cool stuff. Well, All thank right. you for doing this, my friend. I hey, appreciate thank you. it. Thanks. Oh yeah. Website. Oh yeah. Website. How, how, do, how do we find you on the internet? Uh, GaryMorris.com. It's that simple. Okay. Uh, Facebook, Facebook. Gary Morris and... Band. Twitter. I forget what it is now. <laughs> we'll, we'll put it in at the you're, bottom. You're <laughs> My thanks to John Holacek and crew at the McPherson Opera House in the great city of McPherson, Kansas. Check them out online at McPhersonOperaHouse.org. Thanks to Gary Morris and his management company as well. Thanks for watching. KJagRadio.com.